You're listening to Stand Out Get Noticed, episode 255. Hi there, Rockstar, and welcome to Stand Out Get Noticed. I'm your host, Christina Cantors, speaker, coach, and founder of The C Method, where I help high performing professionals and business leaders to build powerful communication skills. You can learn more at thecmethod.com. Now, a few weeks ago, I did announce some changes happening to this podcast, which are now complete, complete. And those changes are that the most recent 20 episodes of this podcast will be available publicly as are a selection of 30 episodes from the back catalog. So at any given time, there will be 50 podcast episodes available for free for you to listen to. The remaining 200 plus episodes are now premium member content only. And these are available to members of the C Method Academy. So to get access to these episodes, plus online masterclasses, live calls, and our supportive community, visit thecmethod.com slash join. Okay. How are you this week, Rockstar? You're probably, uh, like me, stuck at home. I don't know about you, but I've stopped exercising. I've stopped um, eating well, although it doesn't help that I'm pregnant and uh, wanting to eat nothing but potato chips and toast all the time. Um, So just want to let you know that my thoughts are with you. You know, I know that there's there's so much happening at the moment, a lot of chaos, a lot of uncertainty, and I do hope that you're managing to find some calm within that. And if not, you know, that's also okay, right? We all go through difficult times and it's not going to last forever, okay? So the current situation has got me thinking a lot about our health, you know, and this can be physical health, mental health. And there's been a lot of talk as well um, in the media about how important it is for us to stay physically and emotionally well, Um in this environment, you know, because there's a lot of change and it's very difficult for everyone. Um, so that's why I'm particularly excited for my guests this week, because we are taking more of a, a health focus, which is something we don't normally do on this podcast. But I, I genuinely think that it is really important to address right now. So I'm really excited for you to meet Brie Pagonis and Alicia Homequest. They are the founders of Social Enterprise Wellness in Real Life. So they are both nutritionists and, and um, dietitians, and they've worked in nutrition, health, and marketing for a number of years. And they are super passionate about helping people to feel good and to bring out the best in people and to help them become healthier, happier humans. And as you'll hear in this conversation, they, they don't believe in diets. They don't believe in one size fits all. Um, and they are really on a mission to help people build their self-esteem and have a positive relationship with food and their bodies. Um, I met Brie and Alicia at the Pause Fest conference in Melbourne earlier this year, and I just loved their approach to health and wellness. Now, I don't know about you, but I get really confused with the conflicting messages about what healthy is, um, you know, what foods to eat, what diets are best and so on. So I really loved their holistic, compassionate approach. So in this conversation, Brie and Alicia share with us what it means to be healthy. You know, what's the definition of health? Why it's so important to be compassionate with ourselves, even when we eat a whole packet of Tim Tams. I know, never done that before. Not. (laughs) And we also talk about how we can manage our health and well-being when we're socially isolated and stuck at home, as most of us are. So if you're feeling like maybe your health is on a bit of a decline at the moment, whether that's emotionally, physically, mentally, socially, um, this will be a great episode for you to listen to as well. And if you do get value from this episode, please do share it with a friend or a colleague because the more that we can get this message out there, uh, the better. So my first question to Brie and Alicia was, what is the definition of health? What is it really? Here's Brie and Alicia. The World Health Organization definition of health involves, you know, multiple um, 
types of health, not only our physical health, but mental, social, environmental, um, you know, how we connect with others in the world around us. It's, it's really dynamic. And I, I guess we have a really strong sense of what physical health and well-being looks like. And a lot of people think that they can look at someone and, and assume that they are healthy, but health is so much more than the way we look. And that's a massive, massive part of why we started our business and, and, and what we teach um, and share in our, in our business as well. Mm. So outside that physical part of health, what else, what are the other elements of health? I guess mental health is probably the, 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 I don't want to say the next in line, but it's definitely the one people probably turn to more so, and especially these days, which is excellent because I think it was a, a part of health that was really undervalued um, until, until today and, and still sort of is. I guess there's a lot of stigma around mental health and and. Um, you know, how, how to acknowledge what is mental health and what, what good mental health looks like. Um, and we talk, we talk about a lot about that um, with people and, and how, how it is other assets of health are equally as important as our physical health. Um, and, you know, let's not just focus on one facet of health, but on many. Social health, I, I guess that's super topical right now. Um, I, I saw an amazing... Um, I don't know if it was a meme, but just sort of more of a quote um, from another health professional the other day online that said, do we have to call it social distancing? Can we just call it physical distancing um, in this, you know, very strange and trying time? But I think that's really good because to think about it like that, that it is just physical distance, it doesn't have to be social distance because social health is so important. I know if I don't see my friends and family how sad that makes me feel Um, and I'm sure a lot of us feel that you know and I I guess another super topical piece of health um, or or area of health is our environmental health and you know Australia's been through some seriously sad times in the last Mm. few months and the environment's been really top of mind and you know the environment in which we live work and play is, is equally as important as our physical mental and social health as well. Wow so it's a very very holistic approach that you both have very much. Why are you why are you so passionate about this? I think for Leisha and I, we're both women and we've grown up in a world where we see our friends and our family um, and ourselves are experiencing this sort of this tension where, you know, we want to look and feel good. Um, however, we're kind of surrounded in a world at the moment where it continues to tell us that we're not enough, that maybe we're not small enough, we're not eating well enough, or we're not fit enough. Um, and I guess for us, that puts a lot of fire in our belly because we are so passionate about working with people and and starting in a place where you are enough right now. And I feel like um, for us, health and well wellness sort of trends that have been going on for the last few years have really, they always point out where you could be improving, you know, on weight loss or calorie counting or very um, sort of things that you should be changing. Whereas our approach and why we're so passionate about our approach is because yeah, we consider that that whole of health approach, but also that whole of person approach. I, I, I would add to that. I, I, I think, and, and we've spoken about this before, Brie, but, you know, we, we're very, very privileged humans. And I think um, we've grown up in, in, you know, a very privileged setting, a, a, having food around us in a, in a family, in a social environment. And it's been, it, it hasn't been about, food doesn't have to be about calories or nutrients. It can be about the wonderful social aspects that food brings to our lives and, and the other areas of food that are not just, you know, restriction or, or, or all about weight and, and changes in our body. So we've grown up around the kitchen bench with our grandma. Uh, you know, not everyone has a grandma. We feel very fortunate to, to have done that. We, you know, food is a big part of our lives and, and, that's given us a really great relationship with food and a really great relationship with our bodies. And it's, and it's a way of life that we live that we feel so strongly that other people can have the ability to live that way as well. So have you always had a positive relationship with food? Oh, I would say overall, yes, but it doesn't mean that I'm in no way are we um, immune to the bombardment of diet and health related messaging out there and even more now so than ever do we have access to information and social media in particular perpetuating 
um, the the ideal of health and that being the only thing we live for, which is a sad reality for so, so many. So I would not say we are immune to it. Have, being dietitians ourselves, you know, we've studied it. We've studied it food to the nth degree. Um, but I think what's different and, and how Brie and I are very fortunate in that our families have supported us to have that healthy relationship with food, to cook together, to eat together, um, to, to appreciate food beyond the nutrients it provides us. So, yeah, I would say overall, but it was definitely not immune. And I would also add to that in the fact that I think it's been a journey for us. So I think, yes, we've had those foundations of, of food being social and a part of our family life. Um, but I think we've had to, yeah, sort of understand ourselves where the science at there's a, actually like quite a bit of science now that supports and um, a lot of science at the moment that supports the messages and the approach that we've got um, around sort of that whole of life approach to food so um, it's definitely something that we've grown to to build on as well and I think we will forever grow on. So some of the so what I'm hearing is that a lot of the messaging out there around food and diet is very much based on you know food is something that makes you fat mm. or thin. Yep. And it does, and that's its only contribution to your life. Yeah. And it sounds like that's not a very healthy message to put out there. Definitely not. Yeah. So I would agree that there's a lot of focus at the moment. You know, you you see it if you open up if you open up your social media feed, um, or if you open up a magazine these days, you just get bombarded by you know the Jen's lost ten kilos or whatever it is. You know, post baby bods. Um, there is this real fixation around that. Um, like dieting so restricting foods um, but then also around how it can affect your physical health um, and I guess where Leash and I um, focus particularly around food is how much more it can bring to life um, you know around those social aspects like how great is having a cheese platter with you know a bunch of girlfriends and how much social interaction happens around that or you know the joy of celebrations and that food can bring people together. Mm. I read also somewhere tell me if this is if this is true because I know because I, I read that um the microbiome in our gut actually absorbs more of the nutrients in food when we're relaxed and having a good time. So what that means is that when we're having fun and we're socializing and eating at the same time, even if the food may not be the healthiest food, we're still going to absorb more of the nutrients than if we're eating it like stressed at our desk, you know, then if you're eating a salad like at your desk, but being, you know, really anxious. Is that true? It's so interesting that you bring this up. I actually don't know exactly about the microbiome. I don't know whether you do, Leash, about the microbiome and, and relationship between um, you being relaxed um, itself, as in the microbiome, but I do know about how your gut um, and the relation, there's a huge relationship between your gut and your brain. So um, I think the stats are that there's actually more neural pathways between your gut and your brain than your spine and your brain. Someone might correct me on that, but I believe it's around that. And, um, you know, how much you being stressed um, can affect your gut health. So um, there is a, a disorder called um, irritable bowel syndrome, where um, if you, it, it is very, very linked to your psychological health. Um, so, and then that can affect your absorption of nutrients, absolutely. And there is actually a principle um, called mindful eating or intuitive eating that we talk about quite a bit. And it's around how can we become more aware of, of the eating environment and, and really mindfully enjoying um, the foods that you're, you're eating um, so that you can start to slow down that meal, sort of slow down digestion um, and, and that absorption and really enjoy it. Yeah, I love it. I'm sure everyone is well aware of the benefits of being healthy. You know, I'm sure, you know, we know that, okay, it's going to make you give you more, more energy. You're going to feel good physically. What are some of the other benefits of building up this, you know, be, becoming more aligned and, and loving your body and yourself more? How does that, what are some other ways that that impacts us on a whole? Implementing the philosophies that we, we teach, there's certainly benefits to health beyond physical, your physical health. Um, when you think about traditional forms of, of health and, and going on a diet to lose weight, you know, we, we're forming these relationships with food that are very restrictive um, and it's not necessarily doing good to our mental health. So I think the mental health benefits um, in, right. you know, how, how consuming can food be sometimes? Like think about how confusing it can be, how we fixate on food quite a lot. Um, if we eat a food we deem as bad, how guilty we feel around those those foods that we eat, that they're very 
Oh, the mental load. Hugely. And mm. and that is a massive component of health. And some some people can't even imagine a world where that, they don't live in that. They, they don't live in that weight and that burden of feeling those feelings every day around food. So it's certainly um, a lift of mental load. Um, changing the way we think about food definitely yeah physical health improvements are, are a no-brainer if we eat a high variety of foods across the five food groups really abundant fruits and vegetables foods that are rich in nutrients we see health benefits that's just a no-brainer we look at dietary patterns in different um countries you, you probably definitely have heard of the mediterranean diet yeah. uh, for lack of better words style of pattern of eating we call it um, you know, it's it's not very prescriptive, to be honest. It's, you know, it is a diet that's rich in in, in nutrient dense foods and, and mainly fruits, vegetables, legumes, a small amount of dairy, a bit of meat. Red wine's actually a part of their, their dietary pattern, eating food with friends and moving their bodies in ways they enjoy. And they actually experience a way lower risk of, of, of lifestyle diseases that and that includes heart disease, diabetes, um, and, and, and uh, you know, lower risk of overall mortality as well. So, massive benefits in, in removing the focus on on you know calorie counting mm. weight loss and and moving over into the space of of dietary patterns and variety rather than the opposite i know something you're particularly passionate about is this message of how you're enough as you are can you explain more about this and how does it then relate to perhaps our overall view of ourselves you know, as people and also, you know, potentially in the workplace as well. Mm. Something that Leash and I are particularly passionate about is the, the space around, you know, the messaging that we're getting around health at the moment seems to be that we're never quite there. There's always something that we need to be working on or that we need to be pushing forward on to, to get to that sort of never, ever, um, you know, always out of reach pinnacle of health. Um and, and for us, that sort of doesn't doesn't fit with what we talked about before around all those different aspects of health and that particularly around your mental health and how, you know, it forever being out of reach and you forever never get quite getting there sort of starts that cycle of guilt or frustration or that cycle of self-deprivation as well. So our principles is, is around, you know, working with someone as an individual, identifying, you know, where they're at and what they're trying to achieve in their life um, and how perhaps, you know, we can work with them on their health journey to achieve that but not focusing on things like weight loss we would never set a goal around that we would never set a goal around fixing you know restricting foods out of their diet um it will always be around sort of you know where do you want to go do you want to run a marathon do you want to you know ha- live life to the fullest with your family and how can we support you in that as women when we're continually you know for our lived experience when we're continually being told that we're not enough from a health perspective how does that start to affect your body image and the way that you feel about your body and how can we then show up in the world and be confident and and feel so comfortable in our skin when you know we're kind of internally sort of never quite getting to that pinnacle of health um so i guess where what our belief is is that if we can start to sort of shift the goalposts away from weight loss and around to other sort of more achievable and more realistic goals, then we can also start to help people sort of become more comfortable in the skin they're in, focus on, you know, body acceptance, and then hopefully whatever they're trying to achieve in goal, whether it's a workplace related goal, you know, trying to get that next promotion, or even sitting and turning up and sitting in a meeting and feeling confident and comfortable, that they can start to try and work towards that as well. Mm. What I'm hearing is that if we can start to build up more more confidence in the way that we approach food and not be like victim to all these different messages and then feeling like we're never good enough or we'd never reach that 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 level that we're supposedly expected to reach, if we can become okay with where we're at and set realistic goals, that then will then bleed over into other areas of our life. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And, and also that food and, and body are so mm. interrelated as well. Um, and that I think that there's a lot of, of, of people out there that are, are probably experiencing poor image, um, body image, sorry, um, and how that then can affect the way that you are confident in the conversations that you're having or your just general self-confidence. Love it. So Leisha and Brie, I know now is like a really difficult time for people, like, we're in, as you said, Alicia, you know, social isolation, um, social distancing, um, physical distancing. 
And there are a lot of people who are really stressed right now and maybe their health is falling by the wayside. You know, gyms are closing, yoga studios are closing. Why is it like just as an important time as ever to remain focused on on your health? And especially now, I think the biggest, biggest thing we can we can give to ourselves right now is a whole lot of self-compassion. Uh, it is it is stressful and acknowledging that this isn't normal and they are bigger than you. Um, you know, we, we don't we don't have a lot of control over a lot of what's going on right now and it, it, it's it's hard. And and I think it's especially hard around food. I I was even the other morning on a uh, you know, we're all moving to Zoom and all doing our conference calls now, um, <laughs> as as we are right now. Um, you know, one of my colleagues said something like, um, "Oh, I keep I keep stress eating, and I keep, you know, I'm working from home, and I can't stop snacking, and I'm, you know, all I've got in the house is chocolate and chips, and and you know, and I, I sort of just paused and let everyone sit with it. They were all looking at me being the dietitian, and I just, all I said was, "That's okay. It it is okay. I think." There is a lot of panic buying and a lot of stress, stress eating right now. And, you know, that's that's maybe what your body's needing. It's just it's just requiring things that you've got at home. And if you only have tin vegetables, eat the tin vegetables, you know, eat what's available to you right now. And that's OK. Um, it, it doesn't mean that this is going to be forever. And that's having that self-compassion and knowing that it's OK to do it right now. And, and I'll change when I have when change is available to me. That's that's kind of where we sit on that. And it, it's not easy and it's really uncertain. And I think there are really simple things we can do during this time. And, and we're in no position to say you can boost your immunity, but there are certain foods you can definitely eat that support your immune system. Um, you know, eating an abundant abundantly in, in our fruits and vegetables you know increasing the variety people aren't panic buying fruit and veggie for some reason no that's strangely that's available <laughs> I know, every time i go to the supermarket there seems to be a, those those parts of the supermarket are fine it's like if you want to put like people like oh toilet paper is going to protect me it's like no <laughs> vitamin c will protect you so eat your oranges well, yeah. <laughs> eat, eat some more fruits and veg and, and you know that's that's our general advice is is Eating, eating a, a diet that's rich in in, in food, food group, you know, five food groups as as we normally would. There certainly can eat fruits and vegetables that definitely have um, immune supporting nutrients like vitamin C. Um, zinc is another one found in in um, meat and 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 other sort of nuts and seeds and things like that. Um, but it's okay to eat chocolate. Chocolate's a, a really important part of my diet. It's Delicious. like I eat it every day <laughs> and it makes me feel great. And I think. You know, it's just it's just having that self compassion and and knowing that this isn't forever. And if you need some chocolate or a biscuit or some chippies, that's okay. So, what's the difference between compassionate eating, like I I just need some chocolate right now, and then just plain like binge binge eating because you've just you know stockpiled forty eight packets of spaghetti and you're like I'm just gonna eat spaghetti all day every day. Like, where is that line that you draw? Oh, it's it's a very interesting one. We have lost a fair bit of touch with ourselves. When we're hot, we take off our jacket. When we need a pee, we, we go to the bathroom. When we need to eat, we often don't look internally. We, we often look externally for cues on what to eat, when to eat, how to eat, where to eat. And a lot of that time we, we've lost those signals of, of Am I hungry? Am I satisfied? Am I full? And a lot of what we teach is around getting back in touch with those feelings um, and knowing when when hunger is hunger and knowing when full is full. And you know, binge having a a, a binge or or eating to being more than you would be full, that's okay too. That's that's normal. And and as soon as we start tapping back into those feelings of of hunger, satisfaction, and fullness, we're never going to know if we've you know, overstepped the full fullness factor. Um, so there's certainly there are certainly ways where we can tune back into to ourselves and the those feelings, those true feelings of hunger, satisfied, and fullness, and and that does help us regulate the foods that we're eating. It truly does. I think um just to add to that, I think there's also being aware of of the feedback loop that you're having as well. So when you are, you know, um you know, you might think that you're binging or you start to feel guilty because you've you've had too much spaghetti or Tim Tams or whatever it is. And then you 
then you start to restrict it and you say, okay, no, 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 I can't, I can't eat that anymore. I've got to hide it. I've got to do whatever it is. And uh, an example that's happening at the moment, like we as humans tend to fixate on things if it's restricted. So toilet paper at the moment, but it's actually innate in us. And it comes back from when we were hunter and gatherers, you know, many, many moons ago, where if foods were pulled out of um, the diet and you were starving, you had to fixate on it to be able to survive. Um, and that's still in us as, as humans now. So, you know, we start to then restrict and then you become obsessed by it. And all you can think about is that chocolate that you wanted to eat. Um, you're nodding. So I think it's that FOMO. You know, yeah, exactly. And it just, it continues. And then you gorge on it and then you, you know, and it's just this real um, cycle of, of sort of that diet spiral. So, and that's something that we talk a lot about is like, how do we break that cycle and how do we sort of stop that focus on restriction in particular? Particular to sort of be somewhere where we can start to to you know allow accessibility of foods and being okay with them being around and not fixating on restricting them. So apart from eating lots of fruit and vegetables, do you have any other tips for people who are working from a home? Maybe they're stuck at home with the kids. How can people maintain their health? For me, it would be around sort of um, day to day, how do we, from a food perspective, how do we increase our variety? So um, at each meal, you know, one of the best things that someone can ever do for their health is around increasing their variety. So the variety of foods that they've got um, that they're fitting into their day. So it could be things like if you think about the five food groups, a bit boring, but, you know, there's the proteins, you've got your dairy, grains, fruits and veg how do we sort of try and include maybe one of each of them in every meal? So at a porridge, um, you know, at breakfast, if you're having porridge, for example, you've got your grains from your oats. If you add a dollop of yogurt, sprinkle of seeds, some strawberries, I don't think vegetables fit in that, but you know, like how can we sort of just add little bits and pieces here and there to sort of round out your meals? My other, and this is something that I'm trying to apply at the moment is a bit of, I'm a reader. I love information. I like to know everything. Um, and I'm probably personally finding that I'm having a bit of an information overload at the moment. So um, something that I'm super aware of is, is trying to sort of be more careful in what I'm reading um, and also where I'm going for information. Um, and that's probably more from a mental health um, perspective. Yeah. Stay away from Facebook. It's yeah, it's and also just place. like <laughs> no, and some of the memes that we're seeing. I guess we were talking about it before. You know, there are some pretty um, being aware, even from a health perspective, of some of the memes that are going around about like people talking about how they're going to gain weight and and all these things while they're in isolation and and perhaps maybe actually choosing to actively unfollow some of those feeds or some of those people that are encouraging that negative um, self confidence or body image. Mm. And then I think the, the other one is as much as we possibly can, like trying to get outside and move our bodies. But again, applying those principles of self-compassion. So how do we not have to go out there and, and, and run a marathon at the moment? You know, how do we just go out and do something that we enjoy each day, whether that's a walk, if we're allowed to walk around the block or, you know, a walk around your backyard or whatever it is um, to sort of get some fresh air and, and, and move our bodies. I know so many people who are running amazing classes online that, that encourage us yeah. to move our bodies at home. I, I was chatting to Brie earlier today. Um, Nat, uh, one of someone who's helping us with our business at the moment, has a friend in the UK. She's uh, English. Has a friend in the UK who lives on a houseboat, and she ran she ran wow. this yoga session, like streamed it, and all all their mates from across the world came in, and because she's a yoga teacher, and 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 ran the session, and they all did it at home together. And I think, you know, we again, I don't want to use social distancing. Let's use physical distancing, because how beautiful is that? You know, all those people mm. from across the globe yeah. coming together to do something for their bodies. You know, so there's definitely my best friends are a psych you know, a cycle instructor and she's running, um, she's also a personal trainer, but running um, classes online, you know, on her Instagram. And I think there's some amazing stuff coming out of this that can definitely benefit us. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. So no excuses. Oh, self-compassion. To let your health fall into a <laughs> <But> hole. <yes>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> also apply self-compassion if you need a day off oh so there is so much going on right now that if you our health gets deprioritized for a little bit then that's okay too I think okay so com compassionately no excuses <laughs> yeah. no no I totally I totally get it um when I was moving house at the start of the year I was super stressed and I just allowed myself to just be that way and eat whatever I needed and and even though I felt initially I felt bad that I wasn't, you know, sticking to my regular eating my patterns, but I was like, you know what? 
I just need to eat a lot of carbs right now. You know, that's just what I'm, this is what's going to help me get through really. So I really resonate with your message around self-compassion and listening to your body and just being okay with the fact that, you know, I don't have to be super restricted all the time. Mm, yeah. Um. So tell me more about Whirl. What does it stand for? And what's your mission? Uh, so Whirl stands for Wellness in Real Life. We are a social enterprise and it was co-founded by myself, Bree and Alicia, um, actually a good few years ago now. And the, the main aim of what we do is around trying to empower people to improve their relationship with food and their bodies. What that actually means is that we, and we've talked about it a lot today, around taking that focus away from um, weight loss or, or dietary restriction and instead applying principles of, you know, intuitive eating for joyful movement, um, increasing your variety and, and really understanding, appreciating how much more food can give to us than just, you know, nutrients. Mm. Um, so how we're doing well at the moment is we, um, run workshops Well, we were running lots of workshops. Um, we're sort so of to be online, on online workshops, yeah. streaming. <laughs> well, yes, we will look at that. Um, but we were also doing a heat within schools, um, which is, is something that we're particularly passionate about as well. And then we're also launching into an online space, which I'll let Leash can tell you all about that in a moment. But the other thing I think it's important to sort of shout out to is that um, I said before, we are a social enterprise. So we donate a, a portion of our profits or our takings um, to an organization called The Hunger Project, um, which is a charity that aims to end world hunger by 2030. Amazing. Yeah, it is. It's an incredible organization and something that, yeah, we're very, very privileged and honored to be part of. The online tool, this is totally new to us. We we feel like we've become um, coders or something in the last <laughs> month. <laughs> Bree, Bree, it's a whole different so, world, isn't Bree it? more so than me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's the code queen. Um, but we've certainly, yeah, we've created an online tool. And it's a 30-day online tracker that tracks the awareness of the way we eat, move, and think. Um, and essentially, you, you, you log in every day and it asks you a, a series of reflections um, or questions on reflecting on your day um, around those principles of gratitude, variety, self-compassion, um, eating awareness and, and enjoy, joyful movement. And it's really simple, really easy to use. We, we also offer um, lots of recipes on there to give you ideas and inspiration rather than sort of a plan. Um, and, and we're adding at the moment some, some forms of movement and meditation with some of our um, amazing partners of well. I just can't wait until it's final, final, and then we can share it with the world. And by the, yeah, by the time this podcast airs, it will be live, which is super exciting. Yay. Amazing. <laughs> so how can people find it? Where, they, where do they sign up? Head on over to our website, um, wellnessirl.com.au, and there's a link, a page link through there, and you can sign up. It'll take you directly to the tracker, and you can sign up through there. It's we're we're working on a seven day free trial, um, so you can actually give it a go and 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 feel your way through the tracker. It's really fun, but it's fairly intuitive. Great, I can't think of anything better to do when you're like stuck at home. It's like you can either you know eat your Tim Tams and binge on Netflix compassionately, of course. <laughs> Um, or you can, you know, start working on your, your health and fitness and just being more mindful and, and learn, you know, developing your, your intuitive eating and exercise patterns. Brie and Alicia, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing all your wisdom and knowledge with us. Um, any final words for the listeners? For me, my final word would be just at the moment, it is absolutely chaotic, the world that we're living in. Um, and that, food and your health doesn't have to be an added stress and um, if you need to connect with us or want to connect with us to understand more about keeping that calm um, please reach out um, we are very active on social media on wellness.in.real.life so come and yeah have a chat awesome i'll link up to that anyway in the show notes so people can connect with you perfect cool awesome. thanks again Bye. thank you <laughs> Bye. A huge thanks to Brie Pagonis and Alicia Homequest from Wellness in Real Life. I will link up to how you can connect with them on their website, also their online tool and their Instagram, etc. cetera, um, in the show notes at thecmeth.com slash 255. Um, all the links, those links are in the description of this podcast in your app. Now, if you enjoy this episode, please do share it with a friend or a colleague. 
Everyone is going through some sort of stress or challenge at the moment. And I think we could all deal with a little bit more compassion and self-kindness and self-compassion in our lives as well. So the more people that this message gets to, the better. I also want to acknowledge you, Rockstar, for taking the time to listen and hang out with me this week. I know you've got a lot going on. You might have kids screaming at you, wanting your attention. So the fact that you've taken, you know, 30 minutes out of your day to have a listen, I, I want to acknowledge and appreciate you for that. Take care of yourself. And as always, keep on being awesome. And I'll talk to you next week. I'm Christina Cantors, and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed. Mm-hmm.